this exercise, we're going to be designing a linear model predictive controller, in this case in Gecko, Python, for the CSTR, a continuously stirred tank reactor. Now in this, uh, we have a feed that comes in and a product that leaves. Maybe that's going into a lake and we want to get the concentration of A down below a certain level so that the fish or the birds or other aquatic life are not damaged. Okay, so we have a reactor and we can control the cooling jacket temperature up and down to be able to try to control the outlet concentration and the temperature of the reactor. Now one of the things with this CSTR reactor that's very common in uh, many publications in the uh, to be able to test control and optimization is that uh, this is an exothermic reaction, meaning that it gives off a lot of heat and so we have to be careful about a temperature runaway because as it gives off heat then that just adds to the reaction rate and then you can get a reaction runaway where the temperature spikes. So in this case we want to try to control the temperature of the reactor to less than 400 Kelvin. So beyond that we're going to vaporize a liquid we might overpressurize the reactor. And the other thing that we want is for the concentration to be less than 0.2. Now it starts off at 1. We want to get the concentration low. So we need to react this, uh, these, this, con this compound and, uh, and be able to have safe discharge into the lake. Okay, so here's some, so we're going to design a, a linear model predictive controller. Let's just go through some of the methods that we're going to use to design this. So the first thing that we're going to do is do a step test. In this case, it's going to be a doublet test in order to be able to estimate a model. And so here we've done that. We've done a step test on the jacket temperature. This is our TC value. And there you can see the concentration going down and then up and then leveling out as we change the cooling jacket temperature. And then we also have the reactor temperature here. Okay, so we want to try to get something that's going to represent uh, the system with a linear model. So one of the ways that we can do this um, is, so one controller is to use the TC as our manipulated variable and our controlled variable might be the temperature of the reactor. There's a more one-to-one -one correlation between those two. Okay, the other way is to try to use the concentration as your CV and drive that to a target. Although concentration is often uh, not as regularly uh, measured and so you might not be able to get the feedback that you want for that concentration. So let's go with temperature instead. Okay, so this was a change up by plus three and we saw that the temperature in our reactor in this region changed by about eight. Okay, so our gain, um, our gain uh, for our model is going to be the delta T divided by the delta TC at steady state. And so that's about eight over three. Um, and in this region, okay, I'm gonna do the step down as well. In this region right here, it only went down by about four. So you can see already that the gain, okay, uh, from the steady state is about half if you go down versus up. So you obviously have a nonlinear system here. It's going up further than it goes down and that's because of the additional heat that's released. When you go up to higher temperatures, the reaction rate increases. Okay, so uh, we want to be able to select a gain. You know, we could select a gain that's something like um, K equals, let's just select something that's uh, appropriate for this, maybe 2.5 would be our gain estimate. We also want to get a time constant as well. We're going to just fit this to a linear first order system. And uh, the amount of time that it takes to get about 63% of the way there, or about halfway there, is uh, it's hard to see here but it might be about one minute okay so tau, tau equals one uh, minute okay and then we have our linear first order model let me just go ahead and write that out we have tau times 
d reactor temperature dt equals minus reactor temperature minus a steady state reactor temperature. Okay, we have to use deviation variables here plus the gain times, and in this case, it's going to be Tc minus Tc steady state. Okay, we're going to use for our steady state conditions. In this case, we'll use uh, 304 and this one as 280. That would be one steady state condition. You can get that by just operating the simulator at different cooling jacket temperatures and then seeing the effect of, of how that affects the uh, steady state uh, temperature of the reactor. Okay, so here is our linear first order equation. We're going to implement this in a linear MPC controller and we'll do that with Python Gecko. So let's go ahead and just, I want to talk through this a little bit. Okay. And this one's going to be linear MPC. And what I'll do is, um, you know, just kind of talk through this and then also show the results at the same time as this is going. Uh, just because the results are going to take a little bit uh, to finish, we're going to just import some packages here. Uh, you know, Gecko being one of them. If you don't have Gecko, just do a pip install gecko. So as this is typing for us in ghost typing mode, we are going to also run this. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and run it here. It's going to pop up with a plot, and then we'll see how this uh, works. And I'll show you some of the challenges of trying to use linear model predictive control with. Um, Okay, linear model predictive control with a nonlinear model. Okay, a nonlinear system. Okay, so let's just go ahead and ex see if we can expand this just a little bit more right here. I'm going to see if I can make this plot, drag it down a little bit. Okay, so we have our uh, steady state conditions. Um, there in the script, we have. You know, we're just kind of defining some things that are going to help us store and plot these. You can see in this that the linear model predictive controller, the reactor concentration is going down. It needs to get down below 0.2. Um, and then it's manipulating the jacket temperature. Okay, and so you can see the reactor temperature rising to the new set point. Um, there on the right in the script, we are defining a new gecko model. There is our time horizon. We're using a cycle time of 0 0.02 minutes. Okay, and then you can see the non-uniform distribution of the time points into the future. Uh, so th just that first time interval is our cycle time, and the rest are where we want to predict into the future. Okay, we have our initial conditions. We're going to define our constant. You know, I've put in 0.5 here, but you could change that to 1. I also have our gain. I'm just putting in a value of 1 in here, but you could change that to uh, 2.5 if you'd like. Okay, here's our cooling temperature. This is our manipulated variable. And we're going to have a lower bound of 250, an upper bound of 350. We can't necessarily have a lower bound of 0. We can't get down to 0 Kelvin. Okay, so we're going to have to put a lower limit on that. And the upper limit's kind of for protection, not to let the controller go above 350 on the cooling jacket. Okay, our, our controlled variable is our temperature. And here is our equation. Okay, so now the you can see on the left this we had a set point change at two minutes, and so this is going to be going up. The jacket temperature raised, and then you're going to see this. Uh, it'll probably go unstable, is my guess. Okay, and then if you go back to the right, we're just configuring our manipulated variable. We turned its status on. We're not measuring it, so the feedback status is off. We have our Dmax of 100, that's the delta maximum that it can have, and then Dmax high and Dmax low. Okay, so here you can see the temperature runaway on the left. Uh, the reactor temperature is starting to increase. You know, a cooling, emergency cooling system might kick in at this point, but we don't have that. Okay, so the concentration is going lower, but the temperature went above 400. So it spiked above 400, and the linear model predictive controller was unable to, um, you know, it was, it was unable to control this reactor. Okay, so you had a reactor runaway on the simulator, and uh, that would be a, 
a failure of the controller. Okay, and then if we go back to the right, um, we just have our MV tuning and our CV tuning. Okay, we had our temperature set point. We're defining our reference trajectory as well with the TR init and the tau value. Uh, that's how fast we want it to get to the new steady state. And then we have iMode 6, which is our model predictive control. We're using IPOP solver there. Okay, and then the rest of this is defining the CSTR model. This is our simulator where we get the measurements from. And we're going to have the U value. That's going to be our input. And that's going to be our cooling jacket temperature. And then we have our temperature of our feed and the concentration of our feed as well. Those are just going to be constant. We're not going to change those, uh, but you could if you had wanted to have disturbances also entered into your system. Okay, so um, I just wanted to uh, share this. I don't know if we'll go through the whole uh, model here. I'll go ahead and put the source code uh, available on, uh, I'll just show you where that link is. Okay, so if you want to go and just grab this and so this is an example of a controller that is not currently working. Uh, so if you want to take this and then try to adjust it and make the linear model predictive controller work, uh, you're, I'd recommend coming here to the control. Okay, this is the nonlinear control tab. Although we are applying a linear model predictive controller, we're going to be doing a subsequent exercise where we apply a nonlinear model predictive controller. So part of this exercise is just showing that linear or PID control may not be able to work uh, for this system. And so don't feel bad if you can't get it to work. So it's a perfectly acceptable to turn in a solution that uh, doesn't work, but where we can see that you've tried to tune and optimize uh, the linear model predictive controller to control this. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put the source code here. Here you can see a you know, Python simulation code. And that just includes, um, you know, the ODINT version of that. And then we'll also also put the Gecko uh, source code there down below in the solutions in Python. Okay, and they're also available in MATLAB Simulink down there below uh, for the PID controller, the linear MPC, and then also the nonlinear MPC as well. So all of those are available to download and try out for this example. Although this uh, in this case, we just showed the uh, the Gecko Python solution. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, good luck on tuning the linear model predictive controller, and I'd certainly love to see if anybody's able to get uh, stable control that's able to get the concentration below 0.2 and keep the temperature below 400.